Hello and welcome to another Trash to Track. In this episode I'm going to be looking at this Backman Jubilee that I managed to get hold of uh, relatively cheaply because uh, it was being sold with the alleged dead motor. But uh, the detail pack is all still sealed. But having a look at it, this model has seen some use in the past. There are several detail items missing and it is very dusty. Although that's probably my fault as I've had this on my shelf for the best part of a year waiting for its turn in the overhaul queue so i'm just going to dust off the body shell and have a look around and see what's missing the first thing i notice that's missing are the cab footsteps and this is the model with the opening smoke box door feature which i do quite like although there does seem to be something all over the smoke box i don't know if it's nicotine or something but that'll all need cleaning off and the tender there's a step missing at the front again this is quite dusty and also the tender drawbar uh, the pin that sticks in the drawbar has been replaced by what looks to be a panel pin just shoved in there which is unfortunate the original must have broken off with the previous owner so as i said this was sold as having a dead motor and putting it on the track there's absolutely no life in this whatsoever so I'm going to take it apart and have a look and ascertain whether or not it is indeed the motor. And it could be something wrong with the DCC interface or a loose wire. But it's certainly not working with the battery test as normal. So to remove the body shell on one of these, there is a screw underneath the smoke box there, next uh, underneath the front bogey, and one underneath the cab, which also holds the tender drawbar in place. And once those two screws are removed the body shell will gently pull away revealing the dcc socket and the motor gearbox cover etc now all the wiring looks to be complete so i'm going to remove the dcc blanking plate and then try the motor with some uh, wires direct from the battery i'm also going to remove the dcc interface to allow me to remove the uh, the gearbox cover so removing these screws everything on these backman models is relatively accessible removing these tiny screws so once i've done all that and removed everything i can then gently manipulate the motor out of its mount and that will separate it from the model and then i'm going to desolder the wires um from the dcc socket and then i'm going to test the motor away from all that wiring and see if it is indeed uh the motor that's the problem or if there's something else wrong with this model now putting the battery on this motor the motor actually does fire up and spin but it is very very weak it is hardly turning and it is making a funny whining noise and it actually smells quite a bit so I've got a brand new motor here, and when I put the battery leads on this, this was from the Backman Spares website. When I put the motor leads on this, you'll see that this spins very, very fast and is almost silent in comparison. Whereas this one is very sluggish and slow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a quick uh, blast out with the contact cleaner to make sure it's just not dirt build up. But after that's done and it's evaporated, this model, uh, sorry, the motor now won't work or turn unless it's actually turned by hand so it is turning but it won't turn on its own on its own accord i have to physically spin the worm gear to get the motor going so this uh, motor has failed i believe one of the coils has gone so we'll fit that brand new motor from the backman spares website but first i'm going to clean off all the old lubrication which is uh, quite thick and quite black so I'm going to clean that off with a cotton bit of methylated spirits. I'm going to clean all the excess off by just gently rolling that chassis because, like I said, this uh, grease has gone quite thick in here. This model's been out of use for some time, over a year, because it's been on my shelf for over a year. Everything else was then given a wipe down prior to me uh, putting in the new motor. And that was a simple, just a clip fit into that plastic motor cradle. 
But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reattach the wires from the DCC socket to the brush terminals on the motor. And then once that's done, I'm going to uh, just put the orange one on there. Once that's done, I'm going to clip the motor back into place. Um, after testing it now testing this motor with the wheel pickup you can see there that it's turning so the wiring on the model is absolutely fine just going to put some fresh lubrication on the worm gear there this is Labelle 106 grease this really is fantastic stuff I'm going to have to buy some more of this because I'm fast running out and then the motor as I said just clip fits back into that cradle now you have to be careful with this as if you push too hard you will end up uh, breaking the plastic but now with a battery test the model and the wheels are turning fine so just a tiny bit more grease on the actual worm itself and then a small spot of oil on the motor bearings and then i'll clean all the old grease out of the gearbox casing and then it's a case of reassembling that, putting it back in and replacing those tiny screws we took off just a moment ago. Now back on the track, I'm going to give it a quick battery test. Uh, very hesitant to start, but then I realise I haven't actually cleaned the wheels or the pickups yet. So the chassis is upended in my, motor, in my loco cradle. And the base keeper plate is removed. So that I can access the pickups. Now these do need cleaning. They are quite dirty. And uh, I will also put a bit of extra lubrication in there with the axles. Now there are no proper bearings. The axles just sit in the die cast chassis. Which is unfortunate. But you can see there the amount of fluff I'm getting off these uh, pickups. So no wonder it wasn't running very well. But uh, all the cleaning's done. As usual method of cotton mud and methylated spirits. So as I mentioned, small drop of oil on those axles before I replace the base keeper plate. And then I will clean all those driving wheels because on this model, it is just the six driving wheels that pick up electricity off the track. There are no pickups on the front bogey or on the tender. A little spot of grease on there as well. Now some people might think that's a lot of grease, but... It's not really, remember this model has been sat for a year. It is relatively dry but it, and it needs plenty of uh, lubrication to give hopefully a, a good few more years running yet. So to aid with clear, cleaning the wheels, I just put the body shell on loosely there so that it sits in the cradle better. And then using some leads from a controller, I get the wheels spinning and give all the driving wheels a good polish up with a cotton bud and then my fiberglass pencil to remove the oxidization and dirt and bring those driving wheels to a nice shine if you do clean the wheels on a model like this that is reliable for electrical pickup don't forget to clean the wheel backs um, because they need to be shiny and clean as well and now with the battery test you can see that the model oh he says yeah there we go the model is actually running now quite nicely so it was just a case of having a dead motor now to DCC fit one of these is relatively easy. There is a gap um, in the die cast weight in the boiler. Specifically made to hide the decoder. So when I attach the decoder to the harness. It sits down in that gap and, the, and it's out the way. And then the body shell and chassis are reunited. Not forgetting to put that tender drawbar back in place. And then the two screws are replaced that we took out earlier on. So for a change, it was a relatively um, easy repair on this Jubilee, just changing the motor out. Changing a motor in a model can seem daunting for some, but it's a relatively easy task really. Now to re replace the missing cab footsteps, I've got actually a pair of uh, steps here from a Hornby Black 5, and these are put in place with a small amount of Loctite super glue, And you don't need much, just a small amount on the bracket. And they're held in place until the glue cures, he says, after he just locked, dropped off the helmet. But once they're held in place for a minute or so, just to let the glue, uh, the glue cure, I open up the accessories bag and I'm going to fit all the brake rigging and uh, 
some of the detail parts. Now the front footsteps on this model that are supplied are not fitted because if you fit these that will restrict the movement of that front uh, lead in bogey and it won't go around model or train set curves. There's also a shorter tender drawbar there um, to close the gap again. But again, if you fit that, it won't go around layout curves. So to fit the glazing, all I'm going to do is run a very small bead of Deluxe Materials glue and glaze around the apertures in the window frame and then drop the windows in place and that glue and glaze will dry clear. And I've also cleaned up the smoke box in front here with a cotton bud and warm water just to remove all that staining that was on there earlier on. Now as I said, this glue and glaze stuff is very good. Um, just use apply with a cocktail stick, a small bead around the edge of the window frames and the windows are simply dropped in and it will dry crystal clear. As you can see here, this is the next day. Windows are all in, cab windows, and the model looks to be about ready for service. I do like this opening smoke box door feature. It's just a pity there's no detail behind that. On later models, Backman actually did um, include the detail of the tube plate. You can also see there that I fitted the cab doors. These were simple, uh, just glued into place. I also uh, made a step for the tender there that I made out of 40 thou plastic card, black plastic card, because I couldn't find a spare anywhere, and I don't think it looks too bad. Certainly when it's running on the layout, you won't be able to tell that it's a home scratch-built step. So that is virtually it. This Backman Jubilee has gone from a uh, very poorly dead motor, where one of the poles had gone, to now a fully functioning DCC-fitted model. And I do like the look of these Stanier 460s. These Royal Scots Black Fives, they do look nice locomotives. Especially when they're lined out in this Express Passenger Green like this one is. And the ability to pose it on shed with the doors open, etc. Just adds that little bit more uh, detail, in my opinion. So the Jubilee's pressed into service on the Garden Railway, being as it's uh, been about a few nice days so far. So I've got it out running on a set of maroon coaches. If you've got anything you'd like to see featured in a future episode of Trash to Track or anything for repair in general, please email me at danswaterhours at gmail.com. Have a look again at sent over and who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own. So I'll leave you now with some shots of the Jubilee running around the garden. And uh, thank you so much for watching Trash to Track again. Please like, share and subscribe and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye for now. Can I help you? Can I help you? Hey? Do you like Jubilees, Cooper?
Hey? Are you a Jubilee dog? <laughs>